Hey everybody, so today I on this tutorial, I am going to discuss a few things. First of all, I am going to attempt to do a recording every Thursday of like just something, whether it be in my goals for the year or a tutorial on how I do something, whatnot. Um, so this week I am going to do scrunchies. So scrunchies is one of my probably one of my best sellers. Not the best seller, but one of my best sellers every year at my craft shows. Um, at least as far as all of my craft shows I did last year. And so I'm gonna show you how I make my scrunchies. So mine I use I'm using this gorgeous fabric right here today. So I do five inches wide. By the width of the fabric and then I cut that in half the width of the fabric in half to where it winds up being about anywhere between 20 to 22 inches long so five inches wide by about 20 to 22 inches long if I'm using a fat quarter I just do five inches wide by the width of the fat quarter which is usually between 18 to 20 inches then for my elastic straps inside the scrunchies I do a half inch elastic strap or strip that is about eight inches long anywhere between six to eight inches depending upon how tight you want it i i feel that eight inches is good for what i like to do so what i'm going to start off with is in on the short end actually on both short ends but we're only, obviously only doing one at a time so on the short end i'm going to do put the elastic strap about roughly about the middle of the strip here and then I'm going to do a quarter inch strip stitch over it I'm go back and forth just to make sure it's all locked in there now I'm bring it around to the other end bring that last Stick up there and repeat that. I hate waiting for the back stitch. Feels like it takes forever. So then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the so where it goes five inches wide, I'm going to turn that right sides together and put those right sides together. So I am going to start about two inches down, one and a half to two inches down. I usually turn when my fabric is underneath my needle. I know from where my needle comes down at to right on the other side of the plate here is roughly about an inch and a half to two inches. So that's where I go by. And then the same for the plate, the edge of the plate in front of it. I just back tack. And I stop about an inch and a half to two inches before I get over here to the end. You'll see me do that in just a second. So right here is the edge of my plate. So I'm stopping right about there. Just checking the camera, making sure you guys can see everything nicely. So. Now we have this inside out tube. So what I'd like to do is I use these here that I get from Harbor Freight or any tool store will carry them. Harbor Freight is where I got mine from. And they're not expensive, only like four and a half dollars and they work wonders. So I put it in through the tube from one end all the way out to the other. I open it up. We get a good grip here. So I open it up like a pair of scissors. I put the part that uh, the elastic is sewn down onto in there. 
and I clamp it down. And then what I do is I just try and give it a little tug. And now my tube is right side out. So at the end of each, at each end of the tube, what I like to do, grab my pen, my adorable little pen thingy that my son got me. I got a bunch of my pens in it. So what I do is I try and take the end where the elastic is. I make it nice and straight up against the fabric and I pin that. And then I go to the other end and I repeat that. And that's going to help keep my elastic up so that way there it doesn't get pulled down into the fabric when I'm trying to get this sewn up. So I want to make sure that I can get this all fixed up nice and neatly. And everything gets caught underneath the needle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two ends and put them up against each other. I start off with the elastics both in the middle touching each other. And then I try and just start with over here. Get the two ends, two short ends to line up nice and neatly. I pin that to make sure that they stay. And then I bring it over as far as I can get it so that way that I can make sure everything is nice and lined up. Majority of the time, I never pin. I just use my fingers and hold it. But concern the fact that I'm on camera and I need to show you guys how to do this or that not need to, but I'm showing you guys how I do this, then I figure I would pin. Just rearranging a little, so that way there I can get a good grip. To make sure that my fingers don't get caught underneath here. Because that will hurt. And I know this from experience. So keep your fingers out of the way of the needle. Use a purple thing, pointer, tweezers, the tip of a pair of scissors, whatever you got to do. Keep your fingers out of the way of the needle. So I start mine off. Oops. Back stitch. Woo, almost got me. That would have been bad. Sorry, I keep looking over this way. I just looking up at the camera to make sure everything is still going good and goes small. Okay, so now since I got all my pins out and the other end is stitched up, I can do a little bit of tugging on it now to make sure everything's good to go. I'm over this elastic and back stitch at this end as well. So, yes, we have a lot of loose threads in that. It's completely fine because it's going to be on the inside. So now I just straighten out my scrunchie. Stretch it out to make it all nice and fluffy. And then we have this opening here. It is a, let's see here. It is roughly about a three inch opening, two and a half to three inch. What I do is I try and tape my fingers on the end of each of the side of the opening and I tug nice and tight. I push all the loose edges in there inside. I get this up as nice and taut as I can. And I pin to pin it closed. It don't got to be in there exactly a quarter inch as long as all the loose ends are in there and the edges are sealed up. 
to where no one can see it. No threat of any of the stitching coming loose. And there's your scrunchie. Now you can either try and take this over to the sewing machine, especially since you got this pinned down now. And you can sew a seam right on the, sew close that seam right on the edge, about an eighth of an inch or whatnot, to back tacking at the beginning and the end to seal it. Or another thing that you could do is what I always do is I just hand stitch mine. I use it as part of my hand stitching stuff that I do in the evenings when the family, when we're all sitting there watching movies. But here is your scrunchies. All super cute. And here you can see a nice bit or close view. Isn't that fabric adorable? So if you guys have any questions or concerns, then let me know. If there is anything else that you would like to see uh, that you have seen me on my live streams even make before, let me know. I have no problem showing you on a quick little tutorial of how I do things. And um, next week we will be doing a snail trail block for my tutorial. So stay tuned to that. This Saturday I will be working on um, that quote that I've been working on past couple of improv videos. So we'll be doing that. I have all my blocks made up. And I'm going to be working on piecing the blocks all together into the rows now. And I'm contemplating whether I'm going to do that as quilt as you go. I may do it as a quilt as you go. To give a little bit of example how to do that as well. So stay tuned. We'll see how it goes. Bye.